Good morning, Cranbrook Alliance, and those of you just tuning in this morning, we're glad that you've joined us. Um, if you are watching us live, thank you for finding us on YouTube. If you're watching us later, also thank you for tuning in and joining us this morning. I am going to start off um, and fill you in and let you know about a few non-Christmas related news items and events, and then we will move on to a full list of Christmas related things. So first of all, um, this is the last week, so by Thursday, if possible, the last week to uh, submit your responses to the KCA Building Proposal Survey. So that was sent out in a family news update email by Pastor Grant and the Elders Board. So if you haven't already done that and are wanting to submit your responses and your ideas, your feedback, we would love to have that by this Thursday. So thank you for doing that. Also due this Thursday, December 17th, are items for our Christmas hampers. So um, we have a full list of recipients this year for our hampers. We have 25 going out to different families and people in need this Christmas season. So thank you, for those of you that have already dropped off donations, and there still is a bunch of things that need to be bought. So if you're able to um, and wanting to serve our community in that way, stop by the office or give us a call or an email and we will get you some items to contribute to our Christmas hampers this year. Uh, comedian Leland Clausen. So that show, you probably guessed already, will be canceled. It was coming up this coming Wednesday. Um, but stay tuned for details because we are still looking at ways that we can uh, participate with him through this season, support him through this season. Um, and we're excited to just find a way to do that. So stay tuned for details on what we'll be planning with Leland Clausen. Uh, coming up in the new year. Uh, I am excited as Kidsman Director, Kidsman Leader, um, for a new ministry we have starting January 4th. So it is called Rooted, and it is for girls in grades 4, 5, and 6. So Monday, January 4th, after school, will be a weekly group um, for these girls in grade 4, 5, and 6. And I am just excited to have them come um, to a safe place, an encouraging place, and for our leadership team to just encourage them, teach them, and love them through this season and these years of their lives. So if you know or have a young girl in grades four, five, or six, uh, registration forms are available, or just get in touch with myself and I'll hook you up. Now, moving on to Christmas. Uh, Joseph's Creek Giving Tree. Thank you, thank you, thank you to our church family and community for making that such a success again this year. Um, we know those recipients over there at Joseph's Creek um, very much appreciate uh, getting a gift under the tree each year from this community. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Um, I did mention Christmas hampers. Again, our list is full. We'll be giving out 25 hampers, but if you are able to and wanting to participate, uh, give us a call or stop by the office to pick up a tag with some items you can donate for that. And those, again, are due this coming Thursday, December 17th. Also, Christmas Eve service coming up on December 24th. It will be live online at 5 p.m., not live, it's pre-recorded, but it will go live at 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve. And we are challenging you, um, whether you're part of Cranbrook Alliance or whether you're just tuning in on a random Sunday to see what this is about, we want you to invite 10 more people to take part in that Christmas Eve service. So uh, December 24th, invite them, give them the link. We also have DVDs being made available, so if you would like to just pick up and order a DVD and hand that to neighbors with a little invitation, um, that's another way to do that. So if you would like a DVD, please get those orders into the church office by this coming Wednesday, um, and those will be available for pickup next week. So DVDs available, also just sending out the link to those 10 people that you want to invite um, and encourage to take part in the Christmas Eve service. And that is a way that you can bring the gift of presents to those around you. So uh, the gift of presents tree is growing with tags every day. It's really encouraging for us as a staff team every day just to see those tags coming in. Um, and again, I just want to read a few. I pulled a few off this week um, to give you ideas, to thank you for putting ideas on that tree. Um, but these are just ways that we as the body of Christ, as the family of Cranmer clients, can give, give the gift of presents or bring the gift of presents to our neighbors, to our friends, um, to businesses around us. Um, so I have three tags that I've chosen today. And we have people that are spending time talking to shut-ins by giving them a phone call. So thank you for doing that. We have thank you cards and gift cards 
given out to frontline workers. Again, just such a good way to encourage people and love people. Uh, we have helping manning the Salvation Army kettles um, because this year they were finding it tough to get volunteers. So thank you for taking time out to serve our community and serve the Salvation Army in that way. So those are just a few ways, um, a few ideas for you or your family that can encourage other people to show Christ's love to those around you. Uh, again, I am just going to light the third Advent candle, and then we will listen to a reading from Brian and Trudy Clifford. A reading from Genesis 49. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from his descendants, until the coming of the one to whom it belongs, the one whom all nations will obey. And this reading is from Luke chapter two. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his home, own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Good morning, church. Thanks for joining us for worship. This season is, is a time to remember and ponder back on this expectation of Jesus coming and what that means for us. And it, this song that we're going to sing is called Waymaker. It, it isn't really a Christmas song, but it is a promise song, and that is what Christmas is about. And it's this, it's this celebration of he is here now and he's leading us in worship and it's also this declaration that he was a way maker there was no way before jesus christ for us to be reconciled with god that was perfect uh, apart from faith in jesus christ it's a way maker he's a promise keeper i don't know if you've grabbed one of those prophecies prophecy books that we have been handing out in the office but there's a, a book called 100 prophecies jesus fulfilled there. He is a promise keeper. He doesn't break them. He's a light in the darkness. That is who he is. And so we're going to sing that this morning. Would you join us? I 
worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are bring maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, a promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 you are my God, that is who you are, that is who you are. That is who you are, that is who you are, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Your promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are we make a miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are, my God. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are, my God. That is who you are.
joyous noise The sound of salvation come The sound of rescued ones and all is for a few Angels join to sing All for Christ the King How infinite and sweet This love so
Oh 
bless you this morning. Thank you, team. And good morning, everybody, and welcome to this time of worship. I've been moved as I've listened to those words about those whose candle needs to be lit. And so this is our prayer this morning, that the Holy Spirit would light the candle of our souls or perhaps fan the flame for some of us who have been tired and weary. And I introduce this with this question, which is simply, who will heal us? Who will, who will heal us? Recently, I watched a news segment that depicted an anti-maskers rally in Vancouver. One of the participants, the man who sang O Canada at Vancouver Canucks home games, was there and sang our national anthem. He was summarily fired from doing that anymore for the team. Meanwhile, a public health official was on television decrying those who were at the rally, calling them narcissists and other things, probably nurtured some more resentment. Really, in our society, to call wearing a mask tyranny seems to me simply to be a first world response to a minor inconvenience to most of us, which could help someone else, perhaps save someone else's life or protect their health. You see, the longer we are under stress so often, the more it reveals our character, its depth or its shallowness. And as time goes on, we learn more about ourselves. Who will heal us? Those who are tired our healthcare workers who are fatigued? Who will heal those who are sick of COVID-19 and those who are sick with COVID-19? Who will heal our land? This is not a new question. It's just that we are in a new to us situation. And so we ask it again. Who will heal us? Recently I read a headline on the satirical website Babylon Bee. It announced 2020 worst year ever, provided you never lived at any other time in history. Who will heal us? God's people had been through a horrendous time and were asking the same question. They had in their history been moved by God from slavery in Egypt to the promised land. And on the way, they had come to the borders of the nation of Edom. And they had asked for safe passage, saying, we will just stick to the road. But the army of Edom met them at the border and said, much like Gandalf said to the great demon in Lord of the Rings and Something like my grade 11 physics teacher once said to me, you shall not pass. And so they were turned back by Edom to take another direction, the long way around. God remembered this. And now, centuries later, about seven centuries after this, the people of Judah who had ignored God and turned away from Him, were now in a place where they were fatigued and they were tired and they were afraid. And God, through His prophet Isaiah, reassured them that He knew what they were going through. And He said to them that He would give to Edom what Edom deserved for what it had done to them. He said Edom would become known as the place of nothingness. The land, talk about your green plan, the land would be abandoned to the wild animals. In fact, it would be a place where the desert and the wilderness flourished and blossomed with flowers 
and blooms. And he gives this message about his splendor and glory through Isaiah. And God says, with this news, strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. Our God heals broken hearts. Strength for those with tired hands, comfort for those weak at the knees, the presence of God for those who feel afraid. This word save typically describes something that happens to us from the outside that God must do for us. Another example of this involving Edom took place long after God's people had settled in the promised land. One day they got news that the nation of Edom with a coalition of forces was attacking and going to break through. Their king, Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, was deeply terrified by this and he called the people together to fast and pray and they did. And in that assembly of prayer, God gave this message to one man who spoke up and he said, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army for the battle is not yours but God's. And so the next day, the king told them to take their positions. He put the army, the armed forces in place. And then at the head of the army, he positioned the praise team, the singers. And he told them to go ahead. And the moment they opened their mouths to sing, the enemy camp, this coalition of forces under Edom, was thrown into confusion and began to destroy one another. It's been said salvation is God's love in action. Our God heals broken hearts. He is a healer. This healing for broken hearts, God's saving action includes forgiveness of sin and restoration and change of our character. David, repenting of his sins of adultery and murder, cried out to God and said, forgive me for shedding blood, O God who saves, then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Our God heals broken hearts. Have you got a broken heart, fearful heart, a tired heart today? Our God heals broken hearts. He knows you. He sees you. In fact, he seeks you. Will you seek him for his healing? Our God heals broken hearts. An angel of the Lord, as we heard read earlier, announced to Joseph that his beloved, his betrothed Mary, would give birth to his son and call him Yeshua, Jesus, meaning Savior, for he will save his people from their sins. Our God heals broken hearts. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you Rest, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, rest. Our God heals broken hearts. Mother Teresa said this, I never look at the masses as my responsibility. I look at the individual. I can love only one person at a time. She said, I can feed only one person at a time. Just one, one, one. So you begin, I begin. She said, I picked up one person. Maybe if I had not picked up that one person, I would not have picked up 42,000. But she began with one. She said, the whole work is only a drop in the ocean. But if I didn't put that drop in the ocean, it would be one drop less. Same thing for you, she said. Same thing for your family. Same thing for your church. Just begin. One, one, one. Scripture says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. 
He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Our gift of presence tree, as we heard earlier, has many tags on it, and there's room for many more, indicating how we can show love to people and healing, healing for their hearts. Whatever you can do to do that. Maybe you're from a different congregation or no congregation and you need to decorate your tree with a gift tag that says, here's what I'm going to do to bring healing to my neighborhood, to my friends, to my community. Something I can safely do. Whose heart will you help heal this Advent season? I've heard through our hospital chaplains here in our city that Understandably and not surprisingly, many of our hospital staff and, of course, patients are feeling the stress and the frustration of what we've been going through, what they've been dealing with, and in this season, it's always ex exaggerated and larger. So we have covenanted to pray for them. For the next 30 days, I call on you to pray for them, to hold them up, that God will give them peace and strength and help the tired hands and those weak at the knees and those who are afraid. Be healers, for our Christ is the healing Christ in COVID. We call on Him as our healer. Be hopeful, because we have Christ as our Savior. Be helpful, because we have Christ as our sanctifier. And be a healer, for Christ is our healer in COVID. Isaiah's song of healing continues. And when He comes... He will open the eyes of the blind and unplug the ears of the deaf. The lame will leap like a deer, and those who cannot speak will sing for joy. Our God heals broken health. Here, God projects a future time when suffering and illness is eradicated. John, in his vision in Revelation, picks up this same theme of this perfect condition and says, he will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Anyone who's ever lost a loved one whose faith has been in Christ Jesus understands this hope and this longing for that day when they will see them in perfection. Anyone who suffers chronic illness or pain knows the hope of believing it with certainty that someday that will be taken away because we will be in the presence of Christ. And yet the Lord Jesus also planted his kingdom now in this world when he came. And those who receive him by faith receive a taste of his glory and the authority of Christ as he gives us his own Holy Spirit. And it's through His Spirit and by His promise that we cry out to Him in prayer and in faith for His healing power. The Bible says God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made Him head over all things for the benefit of the church. Some have concluded that this means that when we pray for healing, God always must heal every believer who is, who is ill. And there are scripture verses used to support this. Others point out that Scripture also refers to suffering and that the Apostle Paul himself suffered and experienced ill health, as did his friend Trophimus and others who did not experience wellness in this time. And so devoted believers deal with these two truths. One is the brokenness that we experience in this broken world where the residual effect of sinfulness still exists. And the other truth is that we carry within us the promise and the power of the risen Christ. And we are clothed in His majesty and His holiness and indeed His purity right now. Two truths. So we always live with the emphasis that Christ is our healer because He has forgiven us completely from our sin. And yet we don't condemn those He does not heal Isaiah 33, 24 says of the final age, the people of Israel will no longer say, we are sick and helpless, for the Lord will forgive their sins. What we can say with certainty is that for the person who has turned to Christ in repentance and in faith, 
And who becomes ill is not sick because of God's judgment. For all of our sin is taken away. He forgives it all. And so we come to God with authority for authoritative prayer, for God's healing for others. After describing a specific situation of discipline, Jesus then spoke this general powerful principle and he said, I tell you the truth. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. And so we live in this tension with the presence of Christ, our healer, within us, the knowledge also that sometimes believers remain unwell. But this does not scare us away from believing God and praying for healing in a time of COVID-19. Christ is our healer right now. And our role is to be people of prayer, praying for God's power, praying for God's healing. Heaven on earth, Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so in prayer, we bring into this world the kingdom and the power and the will of God primarily through prayer. This is primarily the mission of Christ's church. Be a healer. Christ is our healer in COVID-19. A young teenage girl named Melissa had a diseased heart. It would be terminal. She was waiting in hospital for a heart transplant, and while she waited, her doctors installed an artificial heart, the Berlin heart. And over time, as she waited for a transplant, something amazing happened. Her diseased, sick heart began to regain strength. And alongside, the artificial heart began to beat regularly until it regained its strength. And the artificial heart could be taken away. And so, as we come in Christ's name as healers, we come alongside those who have weak hearts, tired hands, those who are physically sick, and we come in Christ's name to offer prayer, to offer encouragement, for our God heals broken hearts, and He heals broken health. Prayer for divine healing is not merely a teaching, a doctrine. It's a practice, and it's done authoritatively in the name of Christ Jesus. Be hopeful and be helpful. Be a healer. Our God heals broken health. And God continues through Isaiah, springs will gush forth in the wilderness and streams will water the wasteland. The parched ground will become a pool and springs of water will satisfy the thirsty land. Marsh grass and reeds and rushes will flourish where desert jackals once lived. Remember, he has said of other places like Edom, it would become the place of nothing. And in this context, he is pronouncing that someday our God heals broken land. The creator foresees here the perfection and the paradise that he once designed for the world. And all creation will be restored. We read in the New Testament that Jesus Christ died and rose again, and in doing so, redeemed all creation, including the land. He died and removed humanity's sin and shame, and so He is the Redeemer of all creation. And we embrace both of these realities, that we live in a broken world, yet we live in a redeemed life where Christ has come to save it all. And someday we will see that completed. And as we embrace both of these truths, we live in this reality and agree with what God has revealed through His Word. For example, through the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8, he writes, Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, The creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's creation in glorious, God's children, I'm sorry, in glorious freedom from death and decay. 
And we are part of this creation, awaiting this perfection, this return to God's norm for his world. He goes on to say, and we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. Now, so now we live in this time, two truths, a world of brokenness and a world of God's power. And so he goes on and he makes this statement that our first response is to pray. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And then he makes this audacious statement, remarkable statement about how God works things out in answer to prayer. Can we apply this to our broken land right now, to our own province, to our own regions, to whatever area you live in, that God heals our land? He says, and we know that God works everything, causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. Could all things not include COVID-19, something so evil and vile and horrendous? There is no limitation here in Romans 8 about what the all things refers to. And we don't say this flippantly, but we say this with the authority that Christ is going to work in this. Walter Wink said this about prayer. When we pray, we are not sending a letter to a celestial white house where it is sorted amongst the piles of others. We are engaging in an act of co-creation in which one little sector of the universe rises up and becomes translucent, incandescent, a vibratory center of power that radiates the power of the universe. One, perhaps the only, great result of COVID-19 might be that the church begins again to believe in and to practice the power of prayer. Perhaps we've neglected this, or there could be many reasons. But one great reason is simply this, I believe, that we have failed to see the big enough target for our big enough God, that we fail to pray for those things that are too large for us, And we've started to think instead that we could program our way to paradise or at least success. But the Lord has called us to believe him in prayer for his powerful work to be done. Christ is our healer, so we will be healers in his name. We've seen that our Christ heals broken hearts. He heals broken health. He heals the broken land. And he calls us to participate by being encouragers to others' hearts with the same encouragement he's given us. Can you say to someone this week when they ask, how are you doing? I'm hopeful. And when they ask, why? Because I believe Christ has not abandoned us. I am hopeful. Be helpful Be a healer, for our Christ is a healer in COVID-19. I want to end today with this reading from Psalm 103. These beautiful verses that God gave through David's prayer. And it says, Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. May the presence of Christ, our healer,
transform us into healers in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our schools, in our world. Amen.